welcome to books to boardrooms with dr kiran uh, today i have the privilege of having uh, mr uh, niyas ahmed uh, he is the marketing manager at uh, kanu industries and energy industrial energy yeah. industry and energy so uh, let let you introduce yourself can okay. just give a little background about uh, about yourself as well as your organization uh, thanks professor kiran for having me here uh, at the outset uh, as i said my name is niyas ahmed i'm uh, basically from india from uh, my all my education was in uh, mysore university of mysore i did my mba there but i have an experience over 29 years now initially in india bangalore where i worked for companies like uh, airtel hutchison telecom chorus india limited escorts and also hindu jazz and after that for the past for the past uh, 19 almost 19 years uh, i've been here in the gcc 13 years in saudi now here mainly into sales and business development and uh, marketing so about your organization can you give uh you would have heard of uh, the kanu group it's uh, it's a you know regional based organization uh, it has presence in uh, saudi arabia bahrain uae it's one of the largest family owned concerns here it's about 132 years old uh and it has got interest in various fields like travel logistics industry uh, then uh, en- energy machinery capital real estate Uh, the de- division i represent or i i am the marketing manager for that is kanu industrial and energy uh, here there are two aspects to the business one is the machinery which is mainly into heavy equipment uh, and also energy energy where we mainly cater to utilities uh, like power plants desalination plants then we have refineries petrochemicals defense aviation and also a lot of general industry So, so you have a very wide range of product category. So, does it appeal more to a B two B customer? So, you, you deal with B two B customers, or you deal to B two C customers? Again, I would say you know uh, the energy part is mainly B two B. Okay. Uh, machinery, yes, B two B mainly, but also you can see B two C also there. And if you could, if you break down the the kind of business we are into, uh, I would say it's mainly B two B. And all the products what you are dealing right now, is it your manufacturing product, or is it you are distributing this product in this part of the world? Um, I would say you know it's somewhere in between. Uh, okay. The reason I'm saying that yeah, we do uh, have uh, some manufacturing units with our joint ventures. Mm. Like for example, we manufacture drilling muds in Saudi. You know, it's it's a it's a kind of product for drilling. Uh, at the same time, we also have a Kanu flow control walls workshop and assembly unit in uh, Jubair in Saudi. But yes, as you said, you know we we do represent a lot of brands. Uh, but we what we do is we do the systems integration like for example the installation commissioning repair overall maintenance later you know that, that's what uh, you know that's where our company and expertise comes in so when you said that there's a lot of brands you are dealing can you name some of the key brands uh, which you you are responsible yeah. for marketing yeah sure I, again i would i divide them into the machinery brands machinery brands you know we do perkins for uh, engines gensets we have grow for cranes high strain combolift for uh, forklift trucks or materials handling we got snorkel for man, man lifts bobcat uh, here for uh, uh, excavators and you know other construction equipment and also xcmg a chinese company in saudi not here but in saudi then we also have you know a cleaning equipment like beach tech which is mainly used in beaches tenant cleaners massive ferguson tractors these are salaire for compressors this is to with machinery we not only we sell products we also deal in parts we got about seven showrooms in the uae and also service centers service workshops and also if when when it comes to energy again there's a vast array of products like for example we have mechanical products you know static rotating equipment then we have got uh, electrical instrumentation products and services then we have got asset management mainly into corrosion inhibition uh, innovative products like 3d printing and uh, additive manufacturing then we also have uh, products like process chemicals which go into petrochemical industries then we have uh, we do also projects and services then you know uh, to give a b- brief background you know the way it started about 40 years back is we start first start dealing with uh, industrial lubricants or uh, we call mro products maintenance repair and overall products where it's mainly to do with lubricants greaser degreasers then machine tools hand tools then uh, personal protection equipment and also with uh, height safety so this when you talk about this i think what sort of number of sqs you must be managing in your organization i mean your organization dealing at any point of time both industry and energy put together uh, what what kind of what the number of sku's uh, or number of like items what you must be dealing with quite a few quite a few but we have dedicated teams and dedicated people to look after each of the the services and products 
and most of them are trained, you know, well-trained engineers, and many of them are trained by the companies they represent themselves. So, being see, when it comes to a B two C product, a retail product marketing, you know, you, you're very well clear that you know you're going to do a lot of promotions and advertising and brand building activities, etc. In this type of uh, industrial product management, and you being a marketing manager in that category, what are the key roles or what are the responsibility you as a marketing manager is supposed to do in these categories? Manifold, you could say. You know, uh, as you said, in, uh, in retailer, I think you know the offtakes are directly related to marketing. You know, they are responsible for that. Here, we are mainly, I think, we mainly work as influencers, but we play a very important role here. You know, any salesperson has to be equipped with the proper kind of equipment, you know, like for example, a sales kit, a proper presentation, catalogs, a website, probably a, a movie, you know, to go with that. Uh, we are all responsible for that. The other thing is, you know, events are extremely important for us. Trade shows are extremely important for us. It might be an Adipec here, an OTC in the US, or any event, you know, or uh, any exhibition that caters to our kind of business might be general like Edipec or even specific, like for example, there are events only for corrosion or only for walls. We do participate in them or we sometimes you know, participate or even, even visit them. And that's some informa that's kind of information we keep giving to the salespeople as to what's happening and also update them about the new things happening in the industry. Uh, as also, you know, uh, off late, digital marketing has become extremely important and also PR. You know, you can't uh, really be a a good marketing team if you don't have, say, a LinkedIn page or, a, or an Instagram page. And also for many of our products, for example, I was talking about the machinery products, you know, uh, we also do digital marketing, like you've got SEOs, you've got Google Ads, and, and a lot of PR activities also. And that's something new we have started, but I think that's here to stay. I think that's something, again, I would like to ask, because when it comes to retail product, where you see most of the customers are either using social media platforms, uh, but yours is more a B2B product, uh, you know, industrial sector product. So how much role digital marketing plays in terms of reaching those, uh, I mean, who are your target customers there? Is it the, the buyers who use social media or who is whom you are targeting through your social media? Yeah, definitely the buyers are some of them, also the decision makers. Uh, you know, it, it also, you know, there's a bit of an effort from all of us to make sure that people use social media, our clients. And see, the thing about us is, you know, uh, especially for energy, the clients are, we know who the clients are, we know who the companies are, you know, the utilities, we know the utilities, the refineries, but there's, there's a constant kind of, uh, you know, an improvement that's happening, whether it's marketing or sales, to make sure that, you know, they're updated with whatever new we have, you know, and we also introduce innovative technologies, you know, we have been doing it uh, for quite some time also, also now. So you told that there are multiple mediums through which you communicate. One is participating shows, providing brochures and bit back back and as well as then through digital media platforms. Sure. Uh, why I'm asking again this question and comparing with the retail product is for whoever is listening can understand the difference between uh, a, a retail product marketing versus a, mm -hmm. a commercial or a B2B product marketing. So in B2B, when you want to get extra sales, it's all about you know offering special pricing, discounts, offers, price busters, etc. But in a B2B, it does completely work in a different way. So, so if you want to sell, I mean, is there any sort of promotions uh, in uh, B2B products? B2B also happens, but you know, marketing doesn't get involved much in this. Uh, it's mainly to do with the salespeople and you know what is currently needed. And also, the, the, when when we talk of you know B2B, you know, in a utility or a refinery. It's not, the product is not uh, one fit, uh, one size fit all, you know, it is, uh, people have to go do a proper study, uh, recommend what kind of, uh, you know, what, what is the solution there, and then the solutions are offered, and based on that, the pricing is also done. And yes, you definitely do have competition, and then, you know, based on what, what the requirement is, the offers are done. But, you know, in B2B, I'm not, I won't really say sales would get involved in these kind of promotions, but yes, we do get involved in promotion, uh, when I was talking about machinery, for example, you know, for equipment sale, we might come out with a, you know, with a, with a sale. We'd say, you know, there is a, a, there's a discount or a, a freebie, you know, for buy a forklift truck. We might say you're going to get about three months service free or, you know, parts free or something like that. Okay, you know? so you, you still have a We still have a role to play in, in pricing so, and promotions, but not just, not in energy, yeah. but, you know, it, it would happen in uh, probably lubricants, safety and also machinery. So. When you talk about competition right now, uh, of course, because the way the, the categories of product, what you told, the, you, you play in a much bigger category. Uh, you deal with multiple brands. So that means 
you will be having uh, a similar groups or organizations you are competing with so how is the competition landscape it is too tough too many players in the market or how you how you talk about that yeah, but once you are in business you have to accept this you know you have to accept that competition is there it's going to be tough not easy yeah the landscape you know and uh, as for again as far as b2b is concerned the competition is almost everywhere you know if when you go to a trade show you'll meet a company who is a competitor you go to customers your competitors are there you know and if you look at trade trade magazines for example you'll have editorials editorials or even articles from competition so that's how we identify and know what competition is doing uh, but when it comes to machinery it's more direct you know because you know for every forklift truck we have we have got competing companies also for any excavator we have we have got competing companies and we know who are dealing with it so it's more direct there it's more really there you could say is more you know i wouldn't say completely retail because the prices are much larger but yeah there is a comparison that can be made you but know but you give quite a lot of importance to your competition what the product we have to, yes, we, we you have. are giving you know, for example any any marketing person would do a a competition analysis for example you know uh, you prepare a table and you know you do a swot you know you 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 know what is there in competition what is there with us how we are better that's something we need to do okay and so when let's come to a little bit of the market Uh, so which are the markets you handle i mean in the sense your organization is managed only uae or do you do gcc no we are in uh, i won't say gcc totally but we are okay. in saudi bahrain and the uae and also oman so this is the market you basically yep. uh, cater to yes see currently now you know you deal quite a lot in the oil and energy sector right uh, this what's happening right on the last couple of months a lot of uh, political and economic uh, impact is happening uh, oil prices are going up Uh, you know, there's a lot of other political uh, equations changing. So, how these type of external factors are impacting your business? Is it uh, like, for example, in IT sector? You know, during COVID, people thought that things are going to be very difficult, but it suddenly boomed because yeah. everybody started working from home. A lot of uh, laptop use increased. The laptop prices are going up. So, sometimes you know, the political scenario we think it's going against us, but sometimes for a business it can be positive. So, how you see? the current scenario impacting your yep. business yeah more than you know commenting on the political scenario as such but what i would definitely say is you know uh, things are changing in the sense i would say by another 20 years uh, renewable energy is going to play a major part apart from uh, the conventional sources of energy i think at least about 40% might be renewable energy that's what the reports say uh, at the same time if the companies have to thrive survive uh, in the market they have to innovate and without innovation i think the companies are going to fade out you know they have to be ready for whatever is happening whether whether politics dictates it so economic dictates it but you know dictates that but i think uh, the companies have to make sure that they are in the business with new products new technologies for example you know we as as kano energy we are bringing in new technology innovative technology like for example we are bringing in the technology of 3d printing and additive manufacturing you know we have uh, a type of the company called in india called imaginarium you know one of the leading companies and which 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 is going to you know which is going to or digitize inventory for example you don't have to have big warehouses probably in the future you can have it all uh, software and whenever you require a part you can do a 3d, 3D print and, and use it at the same time we also are uh, uh, adopting ai technology that's you uh, know artificial intelligence again we are working with a company in the uk called corrosion radar where you know we do corrosion under insulation in pipes you know in other parts of refinery we do corrosion under insulation completely using ai technology plus also you know carbon capture is extremely important decarbonization of carbon i think working towards net zero carbon is uh, one of the main areas and we already there uh, with the technology uh, in in this uh, field too i think that's the point which i last point which i like to ask because of course innovation plays a very important role in any industry whether distribution manufacturing so if you are not innovative you know you might disappear in the market soon but while we talk about you are in the in energy and industrial sector and innovation is one of the key the sustainability plays a very important part and you know especially the the environmental sustainability initiatives so how is kanu uh, industries and energies is supporting or are taking activities to ensure that the environment is not harmed or how sustainable is your organization uh, as i said just now you know all these are towards uh, maintaining a good environment and also whatever statutory requirements are there we definitely follow them okay. we also have a hsc policy also the company has a hsc policy so i think we are well equipped uh, as a company definitely to um, for all the environmental challenges that are going to happen uh, with the definitely uh, the different uh, different teams are working towards them and what is your 
future growth plans? I mean, are you looking for entering some new market? Are you trying to get some new product? So what, what exactly will be in uh, general? That, that's, an ongoing, uh, process. that's an ongoing process. As I said now, the, the innovation, you know, they're all new products, new technologies. Uh, but that's for, that's for the, I, I would say, you know, that's for the, the seniors in the company, the management, to keep working towards doing that, but based on whatever feedback they get from the market. So thanks a lot. Uh, you know, actually, yeah, first time I'm interviewing somebody who is from a B2B uh, okay. industrial sector. That is very important because uh, other customers or students, they can we can really see what's happening, right? An ad coming in the newspaper or a digital media. Somebody out of the Philip Kotler book. <laughs> yeah, I think it's so. This is something B2B is, uh, of course, in this part of the world, it started all with B2B and then the retailing. Uh, uh, came you know much much bigger but that's something which people don't see like you know how many people go for an industrial exhibition is it's very unless the buyers and uh, category uh, technical person will go for that but that's again a big industry obviously the revenues are much higher the volumes are much higher so there's a job opportunity in that area True. also so it's very important for students to understand that you know what sort of profile uh, sales and pre-sales we know in in industrial segment but from the marketing point of view uh, thanks for coming and sharing this information and uh, uh, I'm sure it will be really help helpful for our students to understand. Thanks how a lot for having happen. me, Dr. Kiran. Yeah? Thank and, you. Uh, thanks a lot. For thanks it. a lot. For the thank you. Thanks, thanks for your time. Much.